If your TikTok algorithm is anything like mine, then you've you've already heard the horrible news. Dina has gone back to Rocky. And even worse, Rhonda found out. Yes, you've heard that right. Rhonda, the best friend who has been trying to keep Dina out of Rocky's grasp, has found Rocky leaving Dina's apartment after a, a little flink. But first, you've heard that Disney has taken Marvel's new reboot of Blade off the scheduling calendar, leading people to think that the movie's never gonna come out, regardless of having big names like Maharshala Ali signed up to be Blade. It just seems like the movie's never gonna come out now. Regardless of how you feel about Bayo de Mayo, I've really kind of vibe with the idea he said on Twitter, where you just take Blade, make him into John Wick, and throw him into a raid style tenant apartment building against vampires until daylight. It's that simple. Give us great action, amazing camera sequences. You got yourself a movie. Over in the fighting game community, if you haven't heard, the new game Dragon Ball Z Sparking Zero came out. And it came out to such a huge success that in October, I didn't see not one streamer streaming horror games. That's how big the game came out. And apparently, despite coming out with tons of problems, it seems like the number one thing that everybody needed to get fixed was nerfing Yajirobe, or as I like to call him, Yajahomi. See, apparently Yajirobe had a very broken healing factor, which just made the character really fun to play with. Now, I understand that if you're getting cheesed and Yajirobe means we're running away just to heal and time you out, I'm with you, I get it. But I'm still of the belief that the Sparking Zero series, the Tenkaichi series, were never meant to be balanced. It was always supposed to be meta. That's why MUI Goku does way more damage than Yamcha. But I digress. Let's not fix any of the glaring problems in rank. Let's not fully revamp the classic controls. No, let's take this fat character voiced by this other fat character and let's just go ahead and revamp and fix him up when in reality he was never a problem. All of this to say, it was never that he was a broken character and it was 100% a skill issue. Now, to all my couples out there, have you ever had that gut feeling that you just can't shake where you think the partner that you with may be cheating on you? But regardless of how much you check their phone, which is a toxic trick by the way, but regardless of how much you check their phone and check their DMs and check their socials, you just can't seem to find anything, but still something in you just tells you, I know they're talking to someone else. Well, our investigations here at the Snail Studios have uncovered an amazing tactic that cheaters are using. Believe it or not, ladies and gentlemen, check the notes app. See, it was about a week ago where I was coming up with new community guidelines for my Discord, where I was working with one of my mods who was working on the rules. Now, this mod has an iPhone. I also have an iPhone. I told them, hey, write it in your notes app, send it to me, I'll look it over, we'll post it up on Discord. They send me over their notes, and unbeknownst to me as I'm reading and I'm making fixes, I can't spell to save my life. And as I'm making corrections, the person is also live on my phone, through their phone, fixing the spelling errors. Therefore, to dumb it down, you can send invisible love letters through the notes app. So ladies and gentlemen, before you go ahead and buy them expensive Christmas gift, just take a look at those notes. And so you cheaters out there, we gotcha, gotcha. Now taking it back to New York before we hit our main segment, Yankees, what's going on? As a New Yorker and someone raised in the Bronx, we talked so much shit. We talked so much shit about us being in the World Series. We need a dub. We need a dub, we need a dub for the city. We need a dub for the Bronx. I need y'all to pull it together, okay? Whether it's the coach, whether it's is, is Nestor, I don't know. But I can tell you this, the city needs a win, okay? 
pull it together, we cannot get swept. Not in 2024. We don't have a mayor in New York City. We need something. Please pull it together. Now, finally, to our main segment, and of course, the reason why you probably clicked on this video, if you haven't already heard. <laughs> there was a horrible, horrible joke told in Trump's rally here in Madison Square Garden. Now, a lot of people have been talking about how racist the joke is, and I'm not going to make any exceptions. I can't. I don't want to already regurgitate everything everybody was saying both on the racist side of the joke as well as the fact that it was just a joke i want to focus on as somebody who really just loves stand-up right and as to why the joke just doesn't work first off this has to be the biggest most recorded bomb of a joke I have ever seen in my 30 years of living. The comedians, regardless of how great they are, at some point in the career, have said a bad joke that just throws off the whole room. And they learn from that moment and, and that they can either revamp or fix the joke, or they just know that it was just a horrible ass joke. This, ladies and gentlemen, was a bad joke that was spread across the United States and Latin America. That has to be a new record. See, this is why the joke doesn't work. Calling Puerto Rico a floating island of garbage does not work as a joke because of location, history, racism, and it just not being funny. If it was just a bit funny, just a little bit funny, you could get away with it. Comedians have said worse, but because it's funny, they get away with it. But it wasn't even funny. That's, oh my God. Oh my God. First off, you could have picked any other group of people. All right, following a migrant joke and then this joke infers that you don't know that Puerto Rican people are a commonwealth of the United States. Now that's common knowledge now because a lot of people like to act like they're historians and professionals. There's a lot of people in the United States that didn't know that, okay? That's just the truth. But yes, I'm here to report, you can go to the airport and without a passport, fly to Puerto Rico. Don't do it, because the Puerto Rican people don't want you there, <laughs> all right? You know why they don't want you there? Because for the past few years, a lot of people, not only white people, but a lot of people are only moving to Puerto Rico to get a tax write-off, okay? They don't want that. The, the Puerto Rican people are feeling used, abused, and forgotten, okay? If you guys didn't already know, there is rolling brownouts and blackouts happening around the whole entire island after they were promised a better electrical grid, so to say. And they have been completely forgotten. Forget about when a hurricane hits, how horrible and forgotten the Commonwealth is. Forget about that. Let's just focus on how certain people are going to the island and trying to privatize public beaches, are trying to section off certain neighborhoods. See, everybody hates gentrification, but can you imagine just a whole country being gentrified? That's what's going on in Puerto Rico. But I digress. This has been said a hundred times over. As a joke, it doesn't work because you could have switched out Puerto, the Puerto Rico for Dominicans. We would have taken it on the chin and laughed. Mexicans, even though it's not an island, they would have taken it on the chin and laughed. Haitians, Jamaicans, you could have picked any group of people and maybe, just maybe the joke would have hit just a little bit better. But we've already, on this new video series if you just check the last episode i took a second to explain to you why the puerto rican people love their flag so much why they can be comically obnoxious about wearing their flag and it's because for a long time it was outlawed and when that law was revoked 
they proudly wave their flag now. Listen. <laughs> you could have even chosen Staten Island. We already, as New Yorkers, don't count Staten Island as a borough. That would have been a way more funnier joke, especially since you're at a Trump rally and there are a lot of Staten Island people there. The joke would have hit so much. Listen, I'm not an, I'm not a professional comedian. Even if you found any of the things that I was talking about just a little bit funny, it makes it makes my day. But I'm not a professional comedian. I'm not here to write jokes or rewrite jokes or tell you how to script out a movie or anything. That's not me. I'm just some idiot on the internet talking. But the joke would have hit if you would have said Staten Island. The joke would have hit if you would have even said Manhattan. You just said a migrant joke. You could Manhattan is an island. Okay, man. <laughs> This has to be reported as the most worst joke in joking history. Now, to give a little bit of context, the comedian, he is known for instead of going for laughs, he goes for the gaps. He's go, he goes for that cringy, trolly, self-deprecating kind of thing. If you've ever seen any of the Kill Tony podcasts, most of the comedians that thrive in that podcast are the ones that make cringy, edgy jokes like that. Now, this isn't to give it a scapegoat to say that just because you're a comedian, you could go around and saying anything. No, it was just such a bad joke. And the the biggest kind of like concern is, oh, this is going to affect the election. I don't think it is. The whatever's polling is polling. Whoever you were going to vote for is who you're still going to vote for. It's or we're less than 20 something days from the election. This isn't going to affect anything. It was just such a sour taste in everybody's mouth. And it just it didn't work. It didn't work. It didn't land. Most of his set felt like he was reading off. And I get it. You know, maybe someone did write the joke for him. It's not weird for comedians to, uh, you know, pre write their jokes or script out their sets. But for some reason, it just felt so melodic. Like it, it really felt like a politician reading jokes that was written for them and not a professional comedian saying jokes. And that's probably why a lot of his jokes didn't land. Because if again, if you see his podcast, he is his most funniest when he's off the cuff, when he's going face to face with someone, that kind of roasting session, if you would. But that wasn't that he's not funny. None of his jokes landed, and if anything, that was probably the most sourest moment of that whole entire event. <laughs> I cannot wait. And the thing is, I know that there's a golden rule about comedians not talking about comedian stand-ups or whatever, but I really, really hope that this upcoming week, comedians analyze the joke. And I don't need y'all to rewrite his joke, but just analyze and at least acknowledge that this has to be the most biggest bomb a comedian has ever done on any stage. He has to win a Guinness World Record for it because, oh my God, <laughs> did that joke fucking suck. <laughs> to my Puerto Rican people, I'm not a white guy, but I completely apologize because I know what you guys are going through. I'm Dominican. We're basically cousins. I'm just sorry because there's a huge section of middle America who only experience the world through these lenses and to them, they will never get to experience your beautiful island and they'll probably think that, yeah, Puerto Rico is a garbage island, but you know what? Let the world think that because I think you have voiced that you don't want people to fuck with your island anymore. So maybe, maybe if these white people think that Puerto Rico is a garbage island, maybe it will finally keep them the fuck off of it. Thank you guys. See you in the next one. This was the Snail News. Bye bye <laughs>